Which way y'all at? Deuteronomy 29, 29, and it reads, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things which are revealed and disclosed belong to us and our children forever, so that we may do some of the commandments of the words of this law. But that's how a lot of people think. We pick and choose. This ain't pick your dilly. Because <laughs> we, you got some people going to do some and do, do, do the other. God won't, if it's revealed to you, then you got you held accountable. Verse 7, Ephesians 1 and verse 7, we read to 9. In him we have redemption, that is our deliverance and salvation. That is our deliverance and salvation. In him we have redemption, that is our deliverance and our salvation. Through his blood, which he paid the penalty for our sins and resulted in the forgiveness and complete pardon of our sins in accordance with the riches of his grace which he has lavished on us in all wisdom a third of the wisdom and understanding no it's in all wisdom and understanding with practical insight he has made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in Christ you may be seated and, 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 and with that being said everything that you know you held accountable that's why I've, I've made a, a, a conscious decision to educate the body of Christ. And I told God, I'm going to go to, uh, for as you want me to go, as long as you want me to go, to make sure nobody can uh, plead ignorance in this ministry. And, and Bishop was telling me the other day, he said, man, I just thank God for you. You're going to the extreme. Because on Friday nights, we in the studio. What, what you do on Friday night? We, we in there t teaching the word. We, get, we meet up. We've been meeting for two months uh, uh, going over the word. What you do on Friday night? I told you, I'm, I'm serious about what I do. And I always have been serious. God saved my life. I've been redeemed. I, I, I have deliverance in every area. God has delivered me. But you got to want to stay delivered. Some people, you know... The scripture said, no man is able to pluck him out of my hand, but nobody say, ever say, I got to stay in his hand, because you can jump out of God's hand. Why don't we look at it from that standpoint? God ain't going to hold you. He ain't going to make you obey him. God is not a boss. He's not a dictator. He's a father. And we don't, uh, and you got to see him as a father. What kind of child are you? I see God as a father. He's my, he's my father, he's my daddy, and I am a son. And I'm going to do whatever he asks me to do. It ain't no God, he's a big God. No, he's my father. That's my relationship with him. I'm my son, and I'm going to stay in, this place, or in my place. So what is it that you don't know? We've been dealing with, I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, go back over what you've been teaching. So we've been dealing with what? We've been dealing with God's will. What is it that we don't know about God's will? What is it that hadn't been revealed? So I, God said, use this scripture for a foundation because it's been revealed. God has a will. Satan has a will. Angels have a will. I got to teach the angels. Angels, angels, angels can opt out of their will if they want to. But a, a, lot of pre, a lot of preachers have said angels gave up their heavenly being to get married. They don't have a reproduction parts. How are they going to do that when Jesus said that? Man, do not read the Bible, dude. Jesus said, angels, there'll be no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven. Ain't going to be none of that going on. You ain't going to have that. Can't, you just can't. You can choose not to obey God, but that don't mean you're going to get a physical body because you ain't got no power. When you choose to do, do not do what God said, you forfeit power. Them angels gave up their authority and right. You get it? You give up yours. So what is it about God's will we don't understand? This is what we need to go. We just doing a review because we don't need to keep going. We need to stop. What is it about human will that you don't understand? Y'all ought to have all these papers. So we want to make sure that you understand. I'm just being obedient.
Y'all ought to have all those papers. You didn't bring them, did you? I know you got your own, Mom. <laughs> let me let me let me go over this right quick while y'all looking through your notes. Just anything that that jumps out at you that you want to be clear on. This is, this, this is going to make for a good class because we want you to leave here with clarity and understanding because, see, it's made known unto you. You know, I heard somebody on the radio say it today, the Lord works in mysterious ways. I'm like, are we ever going to wake up? God is trying to... Let me ask you. Okay. There's power in unity. Y'all remember me teaching this? The beginning of your walk with God is to be sure that your spirit is king. Not your flesh. Not what I think. Can, can Reggie pull that up? By, by, we're going to find out who this joke is. They're messing up my walk with God. <laughs> How about that picture? Yeah. Can you pull that up? You can show, show him how to do that, Joe. Yeah. Or, or, or pull it up on your phone and then stick it in front of the camera. I want y'all to loosen up and let's talk because we're we, we, we going to educate. We, I'm excited about uh, class in the start. We're we getting ready to start our fall classes up September the 20th, 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all ready? Uh-oh. -uh. <laughs> yeah. Read that. Now, to find out who's been sabotaging my walk with Christ. Put it out. Who is it? Himself. <laughs> it ain't the mayor, man. <laughs> Who been sabotaging his walk? He 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 the mad man, but look, when he uncovered himself, it was him when he pulled the mask off, it was himself. It's everybody but the individual ain't. I'm gonna keep saying this, you your worst enemy. And if you don't do something with self, self gonna, gonna rule. God don't want your soul, your, 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 your capacity of your feelings and your choosing to rule your spirit. Man is a spirit, has a soul that lives in the body. Your spirit got to be king. It is your relationship with the most high. It is your relationship. God is a spirit. You can't get God in your emotions. I know people, and, and I ain't gonna lie, it's time to where I can sense a move of God, but that ain't in my feelings. It's not in my senses. It's in the spirit. It's a knowing. I told you, this is where I think from. Your, your Holy Spirit sits right here. The belly searched the most inner parts. We gave that script in Proverbs. Was that in Proverbs? And then we gave uh, John 7 and 38. He that believes on me as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit, you get an unction from here, not here. So we got to learn to let your spirit rule and lead you. Because your spirit is what fellowship with God. Is that true? It is your relationship with peace. Uh-uh. It is your relationship with joy. Now, wait a minute now. What do, what do the power of unity in your spirit being king got to do with love, got to do with joy, got to do with peace? What do anybody want to answer that? That's a simple question. Is love spiritual? Is, is your spirit spirit? <laughs> is your flesh spirit? Is your emotion spiritual? Can you bring your soul capacities up under the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes, you can. It is your relationship with the Most High God. Jesus did it in the garden, didn't he? It is your relationship with peace. It is your relationship with joy. It is your divine relationship. Bring your spirit into focus as the supreme leader of your life by reading the word, praying, and worshiping. This is how you do it. And, 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 and if you constantly do that, your spirit is going to reign. Your flesh won't. God made man so to be a servant. Wow. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. Somebody turn in and get that one. 
He wants your soul, whole spirit, soul, and body, all three, blameless. Make your mind your servant. How do we do that? Not your Lord. Well, you know I would think. That's dangerous. Now, God did give you five senses and he gave you a mind. But when you use those five senses in your mind out from under the authority of the Holy Spirit, trouble is going to come. You're going to choose trouble every time. Because, see, when you choose spirit, it ain't going to never look right. See, when you to go with the spirit, what do spirit look like? It ain't, you can't go by what it look like and feel like. You just got to take God at his word. And I know that's hard. It was hard for me, but I had to learn to do that. When it looked like nothing is going on, something is going on. Amen. Read it. Who got it? You see it? Uh, First Thessalonians 5. Wait a minute. Sanctify you wholly. Uh, every phase of you. Read. Oh, wait a minute. Whole spirit. Not a piece of your spirit. Your whole spirit where Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit dwells in your, in your spirit, in your born again capacity. They are there in unification. There's unity in there. That's why the topic is there's power in unity. If all three are there, they're ready to work in unity. Come on. Whole spirit, soul, and body. Now, what if my spirit is, is third and my, and my soul is, is first and my body is second and my spirit is last? Can the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that's there work with you? Why? Is that all? Because your, your, your soul, your feelings are, are, are number one. You'll go with your feelings. Well, I don't feel good. Boy, if I went off that, I'd never get out of bed. <laughs> as tired as I was today. I, I'm telling you, I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been running myself, been working myself, trying to, trying to kick, uh, kick my own butt and putting it under subjection. I make it do what I want. I, Paul said, I buffet my body. I, I, I will not be brought under. Paul said, I will not be subject under any. I will not be under any influence other than the Holy Spirit. So what is Paul saying? I got control of this. You got control of this through what? God's spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, is not just a spirit called back in the Baptist church. And, and, and this is what they had. We had church today. Yeah, well, well, wasn't the spirit high today? Wasn't he high? I'm like, you know, I just come out the street. So I'm like, you know what my mind was? He high. I just saw folks emotional crying and, and running around and come back and be mean the next Sunday. And couldn't find them. Nowhere on Bible class. There got to be unity. Your spirit, soul, and body got to allow the Holy Spirit access and put everything in order. We got to put your house in order. And once you get that house in order and you feed your spirit and you create you an atmosphere of praise every day and you, you begin to make melody in your heart in the morning when you get up all through the day, Satan, see Satan don't want that. You create an environment of praise around you. It, and when you come here, it won't be hard to do. You just won't stand up and clap on a song. You'll say hallelujah. There ain't no shame in your game, but see it's some shame because we ain't used to doing that. I can tell you. And see, it should be a freedom. You in your father's house. And you ought to feel his presence. You ought to bring his presence. You ought to sense his presence. But if you don't practice on that, then it's not going to happen. You got to train your spirit. The Holy Spirit will, 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 will do that. Any questions on this? Just going over some stuff. Anybody found anything that you want to go over? So we can talk about it. I want you to find something that interests you so we can talk about it to make sure you're clear. Because I don't want to keep going and we ain't getting it. You understand me? Because do y'all go over this stuff at home or y'all just wait to come in? I know the answer to some of you. Your mind, make your mind your servant, not your Lord. Make your emotions your servant. God did not make your emotions 
for you to get up every morning and say, how do I feel? I'm going to have a bad day already. Who told you that lie? So based on, I remember one Sunday morning, a long years ago, I wasted a cup of coffee. And I, I hate to waste anything. That's just me. And when I wasted that cup of coffee, I got angry. It was a Sunday morning. God said, pour you another one. Get it up and pour another one. You know that's still speaking to me? Why did I get mad for? I went and got it up and pulled it and went on. I'm like, God, thank you. That was simple. But it's still speaking. Get it up while you sitting around. I'm up there mad looking at it. I could have been and got it up and enjoying my coffee and went on about my business. I got that coffee up and kept drinking and pulled me another cup. But that's still speaking to me. I didn't let that mess my Sunday morning up. Something that small Satan could have got in. Amen. There's a reason for divorces, heartaches, troubles, and all kind of sorrow. God helps us to live resourcefully, gloriously, wonderfully as, you, as, as a united man with a king, a servant, and slave living together in one house, your body. Wait a minute. You got a king, you got a servant, and a slave. Let's identify the slave. <laughs> Come on now. What is the slave? What is, what is the servant? Oh, who is the king? <laughs> your spirit. So is that, your, is that what order yours in or what order? Let's be real. Who running that? Come on now. You got to put this house in order. Because there are three that bear record in heaven. The, the, the God, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It's got to be in order. What, 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 what is it really like on, on a given day? Who, who running things? Which one is, is, is king? You got a king. You got a, you got a servant and a slave living together in one body. And when that thing is out of order, you, you ever see somebody walking down the street just doing everything, <laughs> looking retarded and all kind of crazy? What, what's going on with that person? Schizophrenic? In that house, what is the house? Your body. You must know who is Lord. Who is Lord? Jesus. Okay, he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Who is Lord? The spirit made alive by Jesus as you walk, talk, and sing to him. Your solical parts must obey your physical parts, must respond and say, yes, I obey, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, yes, I'll lead the way. I was not saying that if I didn't mean it. I don't just sing songs. If, if God got on me about that, I was singing a lot. I told y'all I'd go if I have to go. Man, I was in that thing. God said, I'm calling you to preach, and you won't go. I shut up. <laughs> I ain't say nothing else. I ain't say die. Boy, that was the first song we saw. And they were just, man, what's wrong with you? I said, God said, I was singing a lot, so I shut up. <laughs> I wasn't finna say no more. I'm not saying nothing that I don't believe. I know God is awesome. He done proved it to me. And I proved it to myself. Do we want the preacher to prove to you? Ain't he all right? Get up and say it. Talk to your neighbor and say this. Get, do this and do that. No, you prove to yourself. I done proved it to me. I don't care how good y'all preach and how strong y'all grow in the Lord. I'm convinced you ain't going to convince me no more that Jesus can do anything this word say he can do. You ain't going to, you'll motivate me, but you sure can't convince me no more than I'm convinced. I know he's Lord. I proved it to myself by obeying what he said. And every time I do what he say, it works out. Go ahead. Okay, good point. Organism and, and, and organization. What is the church? Organism or organization? There's an organism, but why is it that if there's an organism, what do an organism do? I had Jalen to look that up in the dictionary. What did you get? You got confused a little bit, didn't you? Okay, give me both definitions. I'm glad you went there. Come on. Stay.
Stop right there. Who you depending on? See, your, you, you as an organism of the body of Christ, somebody depending on you. Where you at? Oh, I'm all that. I'm by myself. God got me on assignment out here on top of Mount Everest. You lie. Yo, I can't exist outside the body. A organization, what's an organization? Now, now you, you better get the answer here. Come on. A, 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 a organization. Organized. And it's got to have a head. But an organization, an organism, need everybody to feed off of. We feed off. Why in, can, I, can, can I pipe pipe into you? You piping into me. Can I pipe into you? Can the person sitting next to you depend on you? Come on now. This is an organism because the church can't be. We ain't unified. We got the same jersey on, but you might have another jersey up under that. <laughs> Now, I'm going football here. Them Patriots, they, they, got, they got cameras all. I believe they got satellites over everybody's stadium where they pipe in and look at everybody's plays and stuff. They going to do whatever it takes to win. And, and, and this is what a lot of coaches tell you. You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah, we used to do it. When playoff time comes, Coach McQuitter, come on, ride. We're going down here and watch this team. We sitting way off. Watching the picture, watching everybody, trying to find their weaknesses. We used to do that. Come on, ride with me. But are we unified when we are not at disposal? Are we really in unity? If Christ is not king in your life, are we in unity? Can we be unified? Can we? You can be part of the body. No blood is covering that part. If no blood is covering that part or flowing to that part, what's going to happen to that part to where there's no blood flowing? Now, every part of the body of Christ can live, can it? You better know it because one nothing dead about Christ. But as an organism, Jeremy, I don't think, see, spiritual first started with God. Father. You ever seen a pretzel? One pretzel, how many holes in that pretzel? A big one. I'm talking about the bread. Uh, 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 uh. Subway sale pretzel bread. Three? Yeah. Let's, let's use the pretzel as a, as a, as a uh, three holes, but one pretzel. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three, one. And all of them work in sync with each other. And if we all had that in order, then we can work. See, if we got God number one purpose at hand, then we could be unified. If we small people right here, we don't need a bunch of folk. If we just stay unified for the, for the vision and the purpose at hand, it'll happen so fast it'll make our heads spin. But God cannot work where there's no unity. We can say we unified, but until God looks at the body and see a reflection of himself, can do God look? Can he look at kingdom faith and see a reflection of himself? Where is it lacking? In the poor pit? On the deacon board? Praise team? Where, where, is, it, where is it lacking? We ought to know. What's wrong with the church? Because we're going there. We need to know. And we ain't picking at nobody, but we want to know what's wrong so we can fix. You want to know what's wrong with your car? You took it to the car care clinic. You took it, you took it over here and put an uh, auto zone and let them hook that thing up to it and tell you what code was in there. You don't run the diagnostic. We're going to die. We're going to run a spiritual diagnostic check on the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> so, what do you, did that help you a little bit? Oh, but, but I'm saying, did that, did that broaden it? Well, you got to be born again to understand that. You got to have God's spirit to understand that. And most people has, has, won't yield and even ask for the Holy Spirit. You got an initial cleaning from the Holy Spirit, but you, you got to get the second impartation. That's what a lot of people are missing. That's what I had sitting up in church when the preacher went to preach. Holy Spirit said, don't listen to that. Every day. Well, 
well, well, a lot of people try to go so far, like say if they own a project, they try to do as much as they can until they get to a point where they know they have to have help. Then they want help. That ain't, that ain't. But that's what I'm saying. But that's not, that's not how, that, how that goes. That's, because see, if that's the case, the Holy Spirit is there to help you in all phases and everything. And see, I know morally good people think they okay. They don't go to the club. They don't, they don't go out. They don't do nothing. They just go to work and go do their business, and they think they're on their way to heaven. And they're not. So your relationship, my relationship with God is seeing how we relate to others. And, and, and your relationship is on display. How do you treat people on a day-to-day basis? How are you toward people? If you treat people a certain way, you're nasty and mean toward people, you're nasty toward God. Your relationship is a direct relationship of how you deal with people. I'm just being real with you. So you got, you got, to, you got to be careful how you treat people because your relationship, you can't say, oh, Lord, I'm just so I love you and can't deal with people. Oh, I got this deep walk with God and I'm standoffish with people. I beg to differ. No, you don't. Because your relationship, the more you fall in love with God, the more you're going to fall in love with people. Because God so loved, you're going to so love. That's how it's done. Because I didn't fool around with people. I, didn't, I had four people in my circle. All of them thought like me, smelled like me, talked like me, and act like me. Got born again, I started talking to people. I ain't say nothing to nobody. I ain't fooled with people. How did that happen? I got God in me. I started talking to people. Hey, you, let me tell you about your old ego. Hey, come here. <laughs> I'm on fire, man. Come here. Hey, yeah, you. Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what I learned about in Sunday school. What happened? God got in me. I wanted everybody to, to know what had happened. All I had was a testimony, but as I learned the word, I shared the word. But to, to, to go deeper, yes. It's a time the way you lock up and spend quality time with God. Then at the time you go out and let your light shine. And you got you just can't isolate yourself. God didn't make no long ranges. You what did Christ do? He had time in the morning. He was with, in solitude. At night he went away and, and prayed up with the Father. Early in the morning he was in prayer. But through the day, God gave him his agenda. He knew he was gonna meet the woman at the well. He knew he was gonna meet this person. He got his agenda because he stayed in constant fellowship with the Father. So through that time, did he isolate himself? Where was he at? Dealing with people. And we probably be Christ-like. Christ put other people before himself. And when you're not putting people before you, you it's all about you. That ain't Christ-like, is it? That ain't how Jesus do it. Read the gospel. Go ahead. Well first, well, first thing first, love yourself, your neighbor as yourself. And I ain't learned to love me, then my neighbor finna catch it. <laughs> I'm finna jack my neighbor up because I don't love me yet. I don't study. I don't pray. I don't, I don't like God. So if I, don't, if I hadn't learned to love God, I'd never learn to love me. I had a problem with me until I got saved and I started growing and I started understanding that God had a purpose for my life and I made peace with what God was doing with me. Then I began to treat myself right because I, I read, I meditate, and, and I, I interact with God. So that's the first thing, treating me right, building myself up so I can build somebody else up. Okay, anybody else? No, this, this is something I've gave out. This is old, the, uh, the power of unity. This is why, before I gave out the conscience, what did I give out when? Did I give out something when? This was uh, 7, 3, 19, um, Okay. Okay. You didn't get that one? Uh, can you send back somebody? Y'all know how to make a copy back there? You know? What did I give out Sunday, uh, Wednesday, y'all? Reborn conscience? You don't have that? Okay. You, that's what I gave out right there. Make a copy of this for me. You know how to make it? 
reborn conscience. Okay, all right. So, listen, listen. Let me. I, I learned unity. This is where I learned unity. At, at playing little league baseball. This is where I learned. Coach snatched me in the in the neck. They lost. I hit. I didn't make no errors. I hit home runs and we lost. And I, <laughs> I was crying, man. I don't want to lose. He said, "You a team." Ain't no, ain't, ain't, uh, get, you need to forget about that. Ain't no, ain't no, uh, what did he say? You on a team and you lost right with us. Yeah, you played good. Your job is to help make everybody better. I said, give me the sack then. And that's when I started taking them up to the field, teaching them how to hit, teaching them how to catch, and we got better. But that, that thing's still sticking with me. So organized sports in, in, in a lot of areas will help, help, help y'all do teamwork. Organized sports got a lot of benefits to it. It taught me unity. Look, we, I played ball with, with people from California, Chicago, Illinois, and all them folks said we were in slavery. Down here in Mississippi, y'all in slavery. I ain't say nothing like In Chicago, I heard about all these gangs. Y'all could take 10 and jump on one. And we didn't like each other. But when it crossed that white line, it got on that field, it was all about winning. And, and the coach never knew it. And I told him this a couple of weeks ago. I said, Coach, do you not know all them out-of-town players then we didn't get along with, with all them guys? He said, why didn't nobody tell me? I said, why? You go run on say them, man, please. <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't going for that. But, but we respected him enough when we crossed on that line, it was, we put them differences aside. And we, we came unified because that's something he preached. Blood, sweat, and tears of the uniform. Either one. He said, I don't care which order you got. But it taught me how not to quit on my teammate. And every time a play happened, I had an assignment. Either I had to get behind the catcher, I had to go behind first base, I had to be somewhere. When I threw the ball, I'd, if the play was coming to third, I had to bag up the third baseman. I had to be somewhere. I just couldn't. I done did my watching everything go on the field. But it, you got you to gotta bag somebody up. Ball taught me that. Anybody that I, I don't I know it's dangerous to play sports, but it's some good in it. If you play right, because some people used to play to hurt folk. But we don't play to hurt. If you play, you can learn teamwork. But the church don't know. I'm talking universal now. If just think of every church, and we talked this on on on, on going show on the broadcast. If you Methodist, you need to be church teaching poor gospel, the whole council. If you the Church of God in Christ, you need to be forget about the name and the denomination, teaching the whole council of God. Jehovah Witness, you need to be teaching the whole council of God. And I don't care who you call yourself. If you ain't teaching the whole Bible and Jesus ain't Lord, then ain't, we ain't got nothing in common. But this is the problem that we can't get the church unified. Just think if we could, we could run this earth. God's power can be seen and say, no, but he do not want this thing to come together. But I tell you what, if we stay unified and come together and, and really do this thing with God, when God look into this body and see oneness, his power will be available. You will see some stuff take place. You won't even have to, you just walk in and then get healed. Stuff will just drop off of you. I'm not lying, but we got to create that atmosphere of unity. This stuff is real. So when I bring my, my spirit, my soul, and my body in line with God, God's power is available right there for me to use. Right there. And you need to learn to experience that. You, can, you, you need to use your faith on purpose. Not, oh, that happened, and, and, and you get so excited, but you got, you got to see this stuff happen. Did you get one to church? You gave me Any other question? Yes. Okay, church and state, what about it? No, no, they didn't. I, I can't put that on the government. Let me let me tell you what the government did when they were giving out TV stations. <laughs> the church said that's a one-eyed demon. 
Now they got to pay to get on the one eyed demon. Due to history of, of, of television, the, they, they were giving out TV stations. Everybody showed up but the church. That's a one eyed demon. One eyed demon. We didn't see the benefit of getting on TV. Now, they'll charge a church an arm and a leg to get on, get on TV. And, and let me say this because it came up in my spirit. Why need a banner? I was listening to this. This woman need to go somewhere and sit down. This man invited her. She had to pay her to come to the conference. 5000 That was That was a deposit. Do the hotel room. Buy, buy a plane ticket. And then they got the money out the account and bought the tickets. Then they went in the room and covered her room with sheets. Because somebody could have been in there doing, you know, wrong thing. So they went in there and prayed over the room. I understand all that. Put sheets over. Laid out her stuff. But the pastor of the church that invited her went in because he had a fruit bag. He like, who, who been in this room? And he went to the hotel, down the hotel and said, now who been in this room? And they said, her people came. Juanita Bible said, she ain't coming, kept the man money and said, you been in my room and saw my underwear. I feel, I feel violated. Another guy invited her and he took, he took the deposit, took his plane money and didn't show up. Change the mind. I just, her spirit ain't never been right to me. I just couldn't get with her spirit. It was something about her spirit didn't set with God's spirit in me. It just something ain't right. I ain't never, I just couldn't, I, I, I hear her talking, but it just, I wasn't impressed by her. Some people get impressed by that stuff that she do. But you got to know spirit in order to peep a spirit out. She said she's just using that to get her true calling, beautician, to get her spa going. She's just using preaching as a vehicle to get that. She said that out of her own mouth. Why can't, we, why can't the body of Christ sift this stuff out? I'm not picking at the lady, but I mean, and, and, and somebody said this is why the church can't be the church, because why did she expose this man? He didn't do nothing wrong. He thought somebody else had, he thought maybe he was in the wrong room. Come to find out there was a room and the wife was saying, he didn't, my husband didn't do anything wrong. He thought that this was something, they gave him the wrong key. And they said, no, this is her room. Her service came up. Then when she got wind that he'd been in there and tried to explain, she went on social media and put him on blast. And still, I go to your brother. If he offends you, come on, Juanita, that's a baby principle there. You so deep. See, this is the kind of stuff we got to contend with. Okay, anybody else? Okay, let me see. I ask you to examine yourself today. Lord, I'm going to make Jesus king of my life. He's going to put his spirit in me to guide my life every day, every, every way, every area. This is, this is something that we got to practice. You got to wake up. I wake up. With God saying, Lord, whatever your will is for me today, I'm going to let your will be done. I, I like God's will being done. You know, I never know what's going to happen, but I know if I'm in God's will, it's going to be good. The spirit must exercise his kingship by praising God. Do y'all do praising at home or while you're riding in your car? Do you create a melody in your heart to God? You got to do that, Saint. Y'all can't, because when you come in, you can't just stand up and look and then after the song clap like we need ovation. You clapping for God, not the people up here. You bring your individual relationship to God's house from doing, listen, from, all right, this is corporate. So you can't say I've been with God. This, this ain't a long time. In your alone time with God is where from your alone time you bring corporate and we all as one come in here to worship God in unity, in one, we get, build each other up, encourage one another, love on each other, get a word from God, bring our offerings and tithe and go back out into the world and make an impact. Come back, get recharged and, 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 and get a word from God. But we don't do that. We just come in like, you know, what's what's what? what? Church is much more, but if you don't put yourself in, 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 in a position, you, you are, uh, man, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing going on. I didn't get nothing. But did you bring something? Because let me ask you a question. I'm going to get these booster cables right from under here. 
Do you do you come here need knees? Do you come here need need a jump? Or do you who can I who can I hook into? Lord, I'm ready to I'm ready to clamp into anybody. I'm 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 full, of God. Who need who who down up in here? I sure hope Pastor got a good word. Well, I need to put if I'm down. <laughs> what if I'm drained? <laughs> Who, who can I hook up into? Going back to the organism or uh, organization. All right, let's move on. Y'all, y'all study this. Who, who don't have this sheet? You can get. Who don't have? Okay. Anything else y'all want to go? Anything? Come on. Some we covered. You want to go back over the reborn concert? You you mean to tell me your concert got reborn? Yep, it did. Come on, y'all. Huh? Let me see. What you what you talking about? Okay. Say, for example, you were doing the presentation, you know, telling everybody whatever. Uh, and did you stay with this or did you add some stuff? What, what do you mean? I'm okay. going to add as the okay. spirit leads. That's what I'm saying. Did you do much of that? I'm going to do, I, I don't, I don't, you got to get the CD. I don't, oh. I, I'm just going to follow God now. I don't know what I said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just being real with you, but, but I, I don't, yeah, I'll, I'll. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to get a CD. So we talked about the definition. Let's go back to what is conscience. Okay. The human conscience is one of the greatest gifts God gave to human, to man. Well, you know, conscience is a, is a, is a gift? Who, who, who gave it to you? Somebody give you something. Is it what is it? All right. Acts 24 and 16. Y'all remember this? And herein do I exercise myself. To have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. I think, Nikhil, you asked how do, we, how do we really do that. Didn't you ask that? How do we make sure that we are not offending somebody? You can look crazy. You can just walk in the room. Look at it. It just make me sick. You can't do nothing about that. It's just something people going to just. It, it, let me tell y'all something. Little convict. When you walk in the room, they're like, oh, man. Man. Man, this person just convicts me. Because people know when they're in darkness, they see light. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Make sure you keep a good conscience toward God and man. What is the voice of conscience? What does it mean to have a conscience? When we say man has a conscience, what do we mean? Without a conscience, man would be an animal. He would not be a human person. He would not be made in the image and likeness of God. Do God have a conscience? You better know he got a conscience. When he heard the children of Israel crying, can I say something? Most people talking about they were crying for God. They weren't crying for God. God heard them. <laughs> they were crying because they was, uh, uh, Pharaoh had died, the one Joseph knew, and Joseph was gone. Now this Pharaoh says too many Egyptians died, too many Israelites down here. We need to enslave them, at least they take over. Because they were popping out babies. I mean, they were repopulating. And they said, we need to do something. We need to enslave them. And then about the last 30, 40 years, that's when they went to crying out. God heard them because his conscience, he promised Abraham something. And his conscience, he heard them crying. And he said, I must, I got I to gotta make, I got to send a deliverer. So look how long he took. Moses' mama got pregnant <laughs> with him. <laughs> and he grew him up in Pharaoh's house. <laughs> and they still were crying. Then when Moses came, I was thinking that. So God got a conscience. Because God gave a word to you. And God ain't going to let his conscience bother him because he's going to make sure he do what he said. So you know when you don't do what you said, do your conscience. I ain't studying that shit. I ain't. Well, you, 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 if you ain't no good, your word ain't no good. Don't See, everything that's what, what did the scripture say? It says that the secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But the things which are revealed and disclosed belong to us to our children forever so that we may do a third of, of some of the word. So how much do you know? A 
quite a bit. If you've been here over a period of time, well, Pastor, I wasn't listening. Who fault is that? <laughs> Who fault? So, definition. The word conscience comes from us from a Latin word, conceal, which means conscience, or with knowing. The word, uh, that's another word, meaning more sense of knowledge. Definition. The word conscience comes from the Greek word, which means knowing or to know the truth. So, before you got born again, God gave you a conscience. When Adam and Eve sinned, that's when they became conscious. They knew right from wrong. And everybody born after that, I knew I was doing wrong. How did I know it? I was talking to my wife. I said, I knew some of the stuff that I was doing. I knew that was God talking to me. I wasn't saved, but through my conscience, God was telling me, don't do it. Don't go over there. And every time I disobeyed, I got in trouble because my conscience was warning me. And that was God talking through our conscience. Sure was. Stop me anytime you want to. So you knew the truth way before you came into Christ. All men, Romans said, without excuse. Because you can look at, it said you can look at nature and tell us a God. So you, you can't say you didn't know. Conscience is the faculty by which we comprehend the will of God. It is a function and operation from the soul, from the soulish part of us. The conscience is designed to govern our lives as a, a, a sense of guilt before God comes through conscience. And we looked at Hebrews uh, 10 and 2. Conscience distinguishes what is considered morally good and morally bad. It condemns us if we are good. It commends us if we are good and condemns us if we are bad. That's where it comes from. Let me flip over here to John. Any question? Come on, let's talk. We, we, we just trying to cover this because I don't want to go, go too far and we don't get this because we want you to get it. Anybody? Come on now, talk to me. Don't do me like that. <laughs> can, can we go to John 16 and 8? And it says, nevertheless, we'll read uh, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you, John 16 and 7, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. If I do not go away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Excuse me. All right. When he has come, he will reprove. What do the word reprove mean? It will convict the world of sin. How, how the Holy Spirit going to convict them and they ain't got no Holy Ghost of the world? Conscience. Get it? Conscience. That's why you can't say you didn't know you were wrong for, for taking it. Stealing cookies out the cookies and eating them honey buns and doing, doing all that. You knew you were wrong. I knew when I stole that bike. <laughs> and I know the church I was at. Uh, what's that church on Clinton Boulevard? Uh, they got the daycare right there in the, in the Queen Bill. Triumph. That's where. Because I went to church with Aaron and Jew and Butch now. I went to church with them. And I was, my back was on, over there on this side. I was doing something. The preacher was, yeah, just like you stole that bike. <laughs> Guess what I did? Sit down and like the Lord, no. <laughs> I ain't had no Holy Spirit. I was, what, nine, ten? And I took that bike. When I got home, I went back and took that bike and put it right back over there. Conscience. Pastor convicted me. No, I ain't. <laughs> He ain't got, don't put it on me. <laughs> don't put that on me. <laughs> let, let's read that. Anybody want to finish reading? John uh, 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 16 and 8. When, when he has come, convict. Why, how, how, wouldn't it be wrong for God to just judge the world without convicting them first? Would it be wrong? Say it. Yes. Because you got to convict them to let them know they're wrong. So when, when he come before the judgment seat, then they're going to say what? Lord, we didn't know. No, they ain't going to be able to plead that. What scripture did we use in the last day? Was that 1 Corinthians 15 and something when we were talking about in the judgment? We were gonna, remember we covered that? Y'all remember that verse we went on? Yeah, if we're going to have to give an account in the white throne judgment, we're going to have to do what? Give an account. Y'all remember that verse? When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. 
Why he going to reprove the world of what? Why, why not righteousness first? Why not judgment first? First of all, he got to get them for S-I-N. He'll be wrong if he told them about righteousness and didn't tell them about sin. But look at the order. Sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin because they believe. So what's the big, what's the greatest sin? Murder? Lying? Homosexual? Come on now. Stealing? What's the greatest sin? Unbelief. That's what people going to end up in here. Well, I, see, I'm a good person. I don't believe, I believe in God. Well, you don't, you didn't say nothing about Jesus. So guess what? <laughs> Something ain't wrong. Jesus, I'm the door. <laughs> If you ain't got a relationship with God, you know how many people think because they believe in God, I ain't got to go to church, I ain't got to do nothing, I believe in God, I'm good. That's what people think in the day. Y'all meet people like that? Do you tell them they, 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 they sadly mistaken? Tell them they got to accept Jesus Christ to get to the Father. You don't have a straight shot. Who, 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 who covers your sins? Tell me that. If they can't tell you that, then you show them how. Isaiah 53. Go over there and show them how Christ, it would please God to bruise Jesus for, for the redemption of our sins. Of sin because they believe not on me. Come on. And of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Come on. Of judgment because the prince of this world is I like what one scripture said already. So he, he judged and condemned and he messing with you, trying to condemn you. He's condemned and judged and he trying to judge you and condemn you and you letting him. What you think of that? And he messing with your conscience. I, ain't, I don't mess with my conscience. My conscience better not mess with me. I'll tell her to shut up in a minute. Shut up. Ain't nobody doing nothing to you. I talk to myself like that. Go to Hebrews 10 and 22, please, somebody. Yes. But you can't be led by your conscience because the Holy Spirit is your guide. Okay, okay. reborn conscience. You got your sheet? We'll go over that. Look at your reborn. Look at, look at that. Hebrews 10 and 22. What did that say? Pull it up, Reg. I want y'all to ask any question you want because I want, I want y'all to be clear. Because when you try to share this message with somebody, then you can be clear about it. I, I want you to share this stuff. Let us draw near with a true heart, which is spirit, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience with our bodies washed with pure water. When you got born again, your conscience did too. And the more you grow holy, your conscience is going to get holy. Yeah. Uh -huh. The more you grow in holiness, the more you grow in grace, the more your conscience is going to be holy and separate. You separate yourself, set yourself apart, start obeying God and growing in the spirit, your conscience is going to grow right along with it. So, let me ask you something. How many of you still uh, uh, letting your conscience mess with you from your past? Because, see, that's what happened to me. That's why when the Holy Spirit, uh, <laughs> I had preached, I, I remember the uh, Holy Spirit had told me one Sunday, I, was, uh, he, I, had, I had just started the pastor, and, and, and he said, tell them about your past. I said, Okay. So I went to tell them, well, the boy, uh, now look, don't be telling nobody about all of that. We don't want nobody to know where you come from. But see, guess what I did? I took the bullets out of Satan's gun. Because see, guess what? Somebody, uh, uh, man, uh, let me tell you about y'all past. It was, he preached on that. See, God had, if it wasn't if I had obeyed, I stopped the devil in his track. So because I told on myself. So I disarmed the devil. So my con went, see, when the blood washed me, it washed me. <laughs> that was, I'm like Paul. That was Saul. That wasn't Paul. 
That was that fool. <laughs> I'm born again now. <laughs> that, that, that was that old evil conscience. My conscience been washed with pure water now. Well, a lot of us don't want that part known, so Satan instead of beating you across your head with it. <laughs> amen. I say amen for it. <laughs> It's possible to have operations within you that do not understand when this is the case. You do not know when you are working with God or not. You do not know how to direct. Corey, do you hear this one? You're, you're reborn. This is what I'm reading from. You, 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 I remember when I didn't know when it was God or, or it didn't work or when he was working or didn't know. You do not know how to direct your inner being. It is necessary to learn these things. It is a primary important to know about conscience. Let us consider the reborn, saved, and converted conscience. So, you, your conscience got converted when you did. Your human conscience fell from grace with the sin and rebellion of Adam in the Garden of Eden. All right. So, it says that it is possible to change the human conscience. In, in your born again uh, experience, many things change. Your mind, emotions, and conscience change when you are born again. But what if you just get born again and then you don't feed and, and grow and, and meditate in the word and, 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 and do the things that you're supposed to? What's going to happen to your conscience? It's going to convert back. Yep. And Satan going to beat you. He's going to go to messing with you. The conscience can become pure only by the what? The, the blood of Jesus is strong enough. It can be cleansed by resolution. It cannot be, excuse me, by cleansed by resolution. You can't talk to yourself or go to a psychiatrist. This is what, this is what the church people are doing today. They're going to a psychiatrist. They're going to they talk to everybody but the preacher. Because I'm going to give you the word. I got a phone call uh, the other day. Uh, you need to talk to this person. Okay, why y'all won't come to church? And why you won't help him? I'm strong enough. Well, why you ain't helping him then? Oh, y'all in sin. So what can you do? Got quiet. Hello? So y'all need to come to church. They got off the phone. There is only one way a human conscience can be made holy. Only Christ, that's Hebrews 9 and 14, only Christ can produce the reborn conscience. The only way to have a good conscience is for the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, to cleanse us from all of our sin. Then we do not have that evil conscience, but a conscience that is holy and good under God. And when you mess up, repent swiftly. When you, when you, when you sin, acknowledge you sin. Well, Lord, I wouldn't have if they wouldn't. Have. No, stop that. Stop that. Because God ain't asked you nothing about the other person. Yeah, I'm telling you, you really want God to get on you? Go to God on somebody else. Instead of coming to him with the junk in your life. God ain't listening to you. He, he wants you to, when you come to God and say, Lord, I got 10 things in my life. Oh, oh you do? He gonna say, do tell. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> he gonna say, talk to me. Well, you know what? My grace is sufficient, don't you? He gonna go to talking to you. And he'll eradicate that jump. But, Lord, Joe Nathan messing with me. I'm tired of him staring at me like that. I'm gonna get it. God ain't gonna even answer me. Because he told me to love Joe Nathan, didn't he? <laughs> I thought we were going to have a better participation than what we had. Anybody? Come on, y'all. Anything y'all want to want to bring up, we, we can cover it. That's on these sheets. We talked about surrender, didn't we? There'll be no commitment without surrender. Definition, commitment is an act of putting into charge or trust. And surrender as the action of yielding one person or giving up the uh, possession of something unto the power of another. Have you really surrendered to God? So you've given up everything and put it all under God. So 
It says, I wrote, I wrote it, when you are committed, that means you in the control. Remember, when you are committed, you're in control. When you surrender, you relinquish control. Write that down. King and country got a song. I, I give you control, body, mind, and soul. Can't do this on my own. I give you control. I like that song. How many times we, we ought to know by now we can't control. We, don't, we can't do this, can we? We know now, don't we? Listen, the weakest saint can experience the deity of the Son of God. You can, you, the weakest saint. But now one ounce, like, listen, once he is willing to let go, once you're willing to let go, you can experience the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in your life. But you got to relinquish control. Well, you know, I was thinking, Billy, I'm going to do this. Trouble. Trouble. I said a weakest saint can experience the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit if you're willing to give up control. But let me say this. One strand of you will forfeit that. <laughs> one strand. One strand. <laughs> one strand. If you find one strand of hair in your food, oh, it's all right. I'm hungry. Waiter. Waitress. <laughs> one strand of you will stop the flow of God. One, 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 one strand of you. God don't need you. He just need, need a willing vessel. Get it? Okay. We covered that, didn't we? That's how Jesus used the authority of God, didn't he? And we said Jesus was under God's authority. In order to be over the things of this world, Jesus had to come under the Father to speak to the wind. To speak to the world. What man or man is this? See, we want to do all that, but we don't want to come under nothing. And I tell men, if you want your wife to submit, model it. Show her. Don't be doing things that you don't check in. Baby, you didn't check in with me. Well, Barney, I don't ever see you check in with your head. Well, I don't worry about that. I, I'm the man. You, you do what I said do. <laughs> well, baby, when you start checking in, I'll check in. You been listening to that big ed preacher. Did they do that sound pretty good? You don't never check in, but you want your wife to check in. How'd that work? <laughs> Come on now, talk to me. Anything else? I'm just going over some of these notes because we're going to, I want to deal with the imagination. I want to go there. God clear me, that's where we're going, son. What is the imagination? Do you not know that's an incubator? Uh, uh, imagination you can sit and think about something long enough and that thing gonna produce in you it's gonna produce an image you're gonna find yourself that's why all sin start that's why all righteousness start anything that you do wrong or right started in your imagination because you sit up and meditate it on I think it'll make for a good sermon a couple of sermons at least anybody else We said this, God's conscience goes out to you in your weakness and failing. When you get ready, when you're at your weakest and you get ready to jack it up, God's conscience reaches out to you to let you know you don't have to do that. Ain't that a blessing? It happened to me that way. I had to go back and think about that one. I'm like, every time when I, before I came in, when God said, you're going to die if you don't come in, turn, stop. But in my, in my messed up moments, I'm finna do some real messed up. We, and, and, and like I said, we were getting ready to rob Taco Bell on Highway 80 one night. And the Holy Spirit said, get out the car. I'm, I'm helping somebody right now because I wasn't going to bring that up. But I done said it before. That ain't the first time I done said this. We were finna hit Taco Bell with me, uh, Jimmy, Grant. And somebody else was in that car. And, and all of a sudden, God said, Holy Spirit, because we were parked right up on the uh, players. You know where players and them naked people know where the light pole. We were right there. And, and, the, and the Holy Spirit said, get out. That was my concert. I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm lit up. I mean, I was out of my, I was in another planet. The Holy Spirit said, get out. And, and you know, and every time I would do something stupid, I would end up preaching. 
I don't care how high I got, I would end up preaching. And, it, and it, then the high would just leave. I would end up preaching, talking about God. But anyway, God got to the driver. And that boy went to, I seen them do, everybody get out the car. That was God. The next time God said, cut them loose, you're going to die if you don't stop doing what you're doing. I too. And Miss Streamfella told me, Bill, she said, you had to make a decision one night. I'm like, how did you know this? Boy, it's people know stuff that you don't even think they know. Miss Streamfella said, I remember the night you had to make a decision. You, want, you either had to go with them or you could. And I saw you struggle. I'm like, she told me that. She said, but you made the right decision. I'm like, Lord. But see, I had help. You had the same help. Don't sit here and say you didn't. Don't sit here and say you didn't have the help. If I hadn't listened to the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be here today. I would have been dead at 17 years old because I was hanging around some people who didn't have a conscience. They didn't have nothing. Because the guy that was driving the car would shoot you. He would kill you. That's the kind of person he was. And he, that's how he died. He shot a police in the head. Guess how he died. He got shot in the head. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Sunday school lesson coming up, you reap what you sow. And saints, I done planted some bad seeds in my life. That's why I work them seeds. I don't know how I work. I know how I work every Yo, Nathan, I planted a lot of bad seeds, Corey, Chad and them, but guess what? I, I do a lot of do-good seeds on purpose because I know the crop. Hey, forgot about that crop and that stuff go to popping up. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Okay, let me go do something. Let me go help somebody. Let me go put something in the ground and count on so that. Amen. Any other thing? Come on now. Anybody? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I said the same thing. Anybody else? You had the same thing. I didn't know no better. Liar. And your parents call me a lie. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. <laughs> Tell the truth. Take the bullets out the gun. He holding you hostage with a blank gun. Unless you don't gave him the real bullets. You, you, you know, look, look, saints. This, this stuff ain't hard. But if you're born again, get in that word. Make time. Get... Get you some quiet. Get up in the morning. When you, when, you, when, you, when you get up, keep God on your mind. Oh, you can keep God on your mind all day, every day. It'll keep you in perfect peace. But as soon as you forget about God, who is, you know who it is. <laughs> you know. Don't answer. <laughs> Don't answer. Who is it? Don't say that. <laughs> you know who it is. Because <laughs> he'll come in, in, and see, he'll, he'll come at you. Let me, I ain't going to even start this back up. Anybody, anybody else want to say something before we let the class come? So we can have a good con. Hebrews on this sheet, reborn conscience. Y'all look over. Who didn't get that sheet? Everybody got that sheet? We got what is conscience? Corey, you, don't get, you didn't get that one either, did you? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to stop right here and let, let uh, the class come. Amen.